What's up, party animals? My name is Kezzy. I have a bit of time left of the night before someone shows up and takes me away forever. Okay, that sounds a lot worse than it is. Um, one of the things that I feel like is important to know when doing uh, any kind of like, com especially computer based music production, but it really goes for like any kind of music production, and that is layering synths. You're not likely to get one synthesizer that completely blows you out of the water and sounds amazing from the first key you press. So you usually want to start with a few smaller synthesizers and then kind of work your way up adding new synthesizers as it goes. Uh, one of the ways I do that in Ableton is I will literally add because you can make what's called an instrument rack, which allows you in one single track to stack different anything really, but really different kind of synthesizers or plugins or what, what have you. And it makes it sound really, really thick, really, really nice. And it's a beautiful way to make any tune with a better synthesizer. On the force, it's a little different because you can't actually stack synthesizers on one track. So it's a little more confusing, but it definitely comes out being the same idea. So let's make a beat. And I got like about an hour, so we'll see where this goes. I'll try to explain my process as I go. Um, I'm not like super well versed in any of this, but I'll give it a shot. baseline something I don't understand yet is the difference between natural minor and a harmonic minor I know the literal difference uh, I can't explain it because I don't remember but there's just like a different series of notes but the difference in how it sounds and how you use it. One I've heard is that you use, if you're going up the scale, like you use something else versus going down the scale and it sounds better. But that makes me think that if you're going up and down the scale the whole song, you switch from natural to harmonic a whole lot, which sounds really annoying, but that's how you make good music. Uh, quick, oh, another thing. Um, I hear a lot of producers saying, oh man, I just don't want to learn music theory. That used to be me, and that still is music, er, <laughs> that still is me. Screw music theory. It's really annoying and hard to learn, but it's inevitable. Not that like, oh, you're gonna have to learn it someday. It's that you're just gonna kind of pick it up eventually especially with computer music production. A lot of what you're doing on the computer is very, very literal, very, very intentional. Uh, you wouldn't want to compare yourself to a group like the Beatles or uh, Queen. I don't know who actually doesn't use music theory and back in those oldie stuff, but like consider yourself like, like Beethoven because that dude went and he wrote on a piece of paper all of the notes in a very literal way. You know, you take a few hippies, give them guitars and some weed, they're just gonna make some sound and eventually it'll sound good, which is fine, but when you need to translate those specific sounds into a computer, a computer you can't just wing it and call it a day. And that's where you're gonna end up learning a lot of music theory is just by sheer exposure to what you're doing. You know, I spent a while trying to make my own chords when it really came out to be chord theory is insanely easy. It's three notes and they're all able to be mixed and mixed up and it's weird. Like learning every name for every chord is not what you should be doing. A lot of music theory seems crazy because it you can just, you can describe things infinitely. But as you work on it, and as you make the music, it eventually starts making sense 
when you build it from the bottom. You know, you shouldn't learn every chord. You shouldn't need to know what, like, C minor augmented third actually is. But you should know what each of those words mean and then how to build that. It's not about memorization. It's about building. And that's the thing that I feel like scares a lot of people away from music theory is that, you know, you hear C major augmented seventh and you're just like, oh my God, what is that? But it's just four notes. And it's just, I'm gonna make a video about how uh, chord theory works. Just a really, really basic rundown. Probably copying a bunch of crap I learned from Andrew Huang because that dude, oof, that dude can teach a frickin' class. Not sure I'm going with this. More beat making. I like that. is we'll go ahead and duplicate, delete these because they suck, and then I will change the synthesizer. I like that first little riff, so what I'm going to do is I did that badly, and then, but I'll just cut that whole half part. <laughs> Uh, okay, I've been recording for 20 minutes. Um, I guess that's a video. Um, sorry if this seems kind of like super janky and lazy. Um, it is. <laughs> I don't really feel like I have been making enough music related videos. Um, after hitting a whole lot of milestones all at once, kind of just like haven't made any music stuff lately. So I figured let's make a beat. Let's show you what kind of power layering synths has. A lot of what I just did here um, was I only really have two melodies going or two tunes going. And I 
copied them both and flipped them an octave, which is something you can do in basically any DAW. So, super easy stuff, super fun to do. Um, and you heard the beat I made out of it. So I guess that's it. Thanks so much for watching. Bye-bye.